Hey everyone, you guys quite liked the editing video from a few weeks ago, so I thought I'd open up Capture One, give a few different types of shots. I've got a portrait shot, I've got a food shot, and I've got a high ISO example here. And we're just gonna go through my approach at color grading these through Capture One, the steps I take and the order in which I take them. So without further ado, let's get into it. So very first, we've got this portrait of LJ here that I took a few weeks ago on a uh, really cool lifestyle portrait shoot, documentary style shoot that I did for this band. That was there for a couple days and we shot a whole bunch of uh, documentary style photos of the recording process of a few songs with legendary recording producer Garth Richardson. Thank you so much for being ever so welcoming um, um, with, with us. So anyway, to the shot itself. So if I've got a photo like this, this is a uh, daylight, daylight mixed with flash and we've got the sun that's kind of rimming our subject and I've got a main light that's lighting it on top. If I've got a, I should have like a behind the scenes video, I'll pop it up somewhere here on the screen for you guys so you guys get an idea of what it looks like. And yeah, I just wanted to do kind of the same shot for everyone in the band, sort of like this. So if I got this photo here, what I'm gonna do personally, um, first thing I would do would be the white balance, which I've already done. I just adjusted it here for you guys. I just, so that it's clean and simple. Um, but from there, we just kind of work our way down. I've made it, I put my tools in order in the, in the, in the order that I want them to be already. So that it makes it a little bit easier that way. So very first thing we'd adjust would be this exposure area, um, which to me, I, I think the exposure is pretty spot on. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, but I'm going to wait for that because I don't want to go too far one or the other. Um, one of the things I like to do, oftentimes I'll boost my shadows and I'll crunch my blacks, which just helps kind of give me the contrast where I want it specifically, the type of contrast that I want. So I don't have, uh, so I still get a little bit of life in the shadows, but I don't entirely have a, you know, HDR style photo. From there, I can add a little bit of general contrast. I think Capture One does a really good job at, like you don't need to, like a contrast slider of 10 is a lot. In, in a Capture One, I feel like I remember on, on in the Lightroom days that you could easily go to like crank that shit to 70 and it still looks normal and natural. Um, you do that in Capture One and it's like, it's intense. You know, maybe some people are into this kind of look, but um, I'm not. So it's, you can be a little bit more subtle with Capture One. I think that they do, the, the program does a really good job. Uh, I am going to desaturate this, maybe like four or 5% just a little bit in order to kind of preserve some skin tones and not go too rich. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of structure and a little clarity, just a little bit. I'm really, these guys are, you know, gritty rockers, so it doesn't really matter if I kind of expose some of those pores in their skin. But usually if you're doing portraits, you probably don't want, you want, you want to avoid the clarity slider as much as possible, usually. Um, next up, levels. I'm actually gonna do the color grade in the one of the next tools that's coming up. So I'm gonna leave the levels as is for now. Curves, one of the, my favorite part of Capture One is the Luma curve, which is a curve that doesn't adjust the colors. So you can add just contrast and just play with the variance in the highlights and lowlights without actually um, affecting the colors and without getting too much weird saturation errors. So one, things I like, one of the things I like to do is just add a little general contrast curve in the Luma. This gives us a little bit more punch, not going over. Maybe open up my highlights to see where I'm clipping, see, you know, get an idea of what the shot looks like beyond just what my eyes can see. Um, so I can see here I'm clipping a little bit of the sun, of, 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 the, of the sky, which is not too big of a, of a deal, but one of the things we can do is easily just come in in the color, move a couple points in the, in, in the brightness. And, uh, and yeah, we get a little bit more saturation back into, uh, back into that sky. Not super necessary, but you know, if that's some, if you're, if you didn't want this to blow out, that's, you know, where you can save it a little bit it, as much as possible. You kind of want to shoot for the shadows and uh, save your highlights, but you know, you there's some wiggle room as well. Uh, so I'm going to open up here, this, this tool here, the, the three way color balance. This is definitely one of my favorite tools as well in capture one. It allows you to separate, you know, highlights and shadows and kind of throw color into whatever you want. It's just like the split toning tool in, in Lightroom, but uh, just really precise, really good at it. I quite like this, the way it does this. Um, so let's see here. Let's throw a little highlight. Oh, let's do it the opposite, my bad. 
There we go, something kind of like that. Bring the opacity down a little. There we go, quite like that. If I hold Option or Shift, I believe, or Alt, probably Alt on your computer, uh, you can kind of toggle the before and after of just that specific tool. Next up, we can play with the individual colors and just kind of make certain colors pop or certain colors dull down a little bit, whether if we need to. I'm happy with how these look, so we're just leaving it at that. We're gonna give it a tiny little bit of grain. Whoops, I want the silver rich grain. Just a little bit of texture to, uh, especially for portrait work, I think it looks good. And uh, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, pretty decently well color graded shot for me. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I would move on, you know, I think it's got dimension. It's a little bit different. It doesn't look like a regular portrait, but you still got pretty accurate and, and flattering skin tones. So yeah, there we go, moving on. So next shot I have set up for us is this food shot. Um, so obviously as much as possible, I try to shoot these in camera, but sometimes, you know, you, you make, either you make mistakes or you are in a situation where you have to have your light set up in a very specific certain way and you're just not gonna get enough light for the type of shot that you're trying to get. So I knew that I would have to save this shot a little bit in editing and thankfully I was able to and I'm just gonna show you how I did it and, and, and yeah, we'll go from there. Again, this is one of those shots where, you know, you just kinda, as a working photographer, it's like you show up and this is what you're, uh, this is what you're, you're dealt with and you have to do the best you can with what you got. So this is what I was served. So first thing I think I definitely need to do is make this a little bit brighter. So we're just gonna add at least a stop, uh, just of general uh, brightness to the shot that I think is gonna help, you know, bring out some of the life in some of these things, some of this food. We're gonna increase our shadow as well. Again, this is not, I feel like if, you know, if, if I have time, if I have the luxury to set up shop, I have a, if I'm in my studio, I'm shooting this, I'm gonna have multiple lights set up. I'm gonna have, a fill light, I'm gonna have a nice directional light, I'm gonna add some, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fine tune this lighting so that I know it's perfect, so I don't have to do any kind of editing errors or any kind of like tweaking in Photoshop, because the more you get it right in camera, the better it's gonna be. But you can still save some shots in post, and, and that's what I'm trying to show you with, with a shot like this. So, increase those shadows, and same as before, I'm gonna crush those blacks a little bit, so that it just gives me back a little bit of that contrast. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast with the traditional contrast lighter. I think that's pretty good. Next up, we're gonna add a little bit of clarity and structure. And I'm gonna use the punch, which is a little bit more, I mean, punchy, I guess, really. If you look at the difference, that's with punch. This is with natural. Not a huge difference, but definitely a little bit more uh, grunge in those mid-tones. I think it looks good for food and product oftentimes, so I, that's how I use it. Um, Next up, I'm thinking I'm gonna pop open my little keystone tool here. Let's just hit the auto, see if it works, does not. So I think I'm gonna use this guy here, just kind of straighten it out a little bit. I, um, there we go. I, I shot this by hand, you know, kind of holding it over while standing on a chair. So again, this is a run and gun shoot. This wasn't a, you know, very high end, this was, Restaurant cooked me the food, propped it down, took a photo. All right, moving on. So it, it was, let's get it done. It's more important to have it than it is to have it perfect. So do what you can, you know? There we go, a little bit straighter, I think. Uh, we're gonna crop in just a tiny bit, just so I am at the edge of the tiles. I don't think I need to see the corners necessarily. Um, I'm gonna reopen that keystone. I don't think I did this one properly. That's a bit better. I went the wrong way with that, didn't I? There we go. And you can, you know, obviously you fine tune this. You do, uh, you, you play around with it however you wish. I'm trying to get some of these squares lined up, but sometimes, especially that this is a handmade table, sometimes, you know, that those squares aren't exactly as straight as st real straight. So, you know, you just kind of play with it, see what works. So next in adding a little bit of this color, this is, again, this is a shot where I don't want it to be color graded in a very, stylistic way, you know, I don't need it to be skewed in a specific color palette, you know, I don't need it to look like this. I want the food to look appetizing and real, so I just want the image to be as accurate as possible. So I've got my white balance set the way it's supposed to, I shot it with a gray card, 
I made sure that the gray card was, was accurate, and now I just made it a little bit brighter and a little bit more lively to make it look like the way I wanted to shoot it, I just wasn't able to in the first place. Um, the flash here is a little bit too close, so we're getting a little bit more fall off than I want to, because this is meant to mimic a midday sun, but if you're if you look at a table in the midday sun, the left side of the table and the right side of the table should have the same exposure. So this here doesn't really work for me, how the left side is brighter than the right side. So one of the ways I like to use to just kind of mitigate that a little bit, it's not perfect. Again, this is just putting a Band-Aid. But one of the ways that you can do that is just having a, uh, where are we here? Linear gradient. I'm gonna throw that on over here. And I'm just going to increase the shadows a little bit. By a little bit, I mean a lot. And there we go. Now the shot is a little bit more even left to right. And another amazing thing about Capture One, if you didn't know already, um, it's got layers. So I can take just that layer of just that adjustment and make it more or less opaque and have, a bit, have it be more visible or not. Um, pretty sure you can't do that in Lightroom. Um, I feel like this feature alone is probably worth the switch, but anyway, you keep deciding for yourself. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the shot. I don't think I would do too much more to the shot. I just need to make it brighter, make it a bit more how I wanted to shoot it. And uh, and yeah, if we were to go into Photoshop, then I could fine tune and I would edit all of these uh, pieces of food individually, and we'll do that in another video. But I think for this and for the color grade section of this shot, that's good enough. Let's move on. So here, finally, we've got the third shot that I pulled out, which was a high ISO example, because sometimes editing shots that are, you know, not shot at ISO 100 is a little bit easier, is a little bit different. Um, I, I have the luxury of spending the majority of my time at very base ISO, so it's, it's rare that I get to edit shots like this. But again, with this band last week, I spent the majority of the time actually at ISO 5000 and at uh, F1.4 or 1.8, things like that. So I was out of... Not out of, well, out of my comfort zone because it's stuff I used to do when I was first starting out, but I haven't done it in quite a while, so it was, it was neat to kind of explore that field once again. But yeah, left me with a whole bunch of shots. This one here is shot at ISO 6400 at uh, 1.4. We're in a uh, basement room. There's no windows. That The only light is the lamp that's on. It's super dark in this room. So without being, you know, uh, too boring about it, I think one of the easiest things to do or one of the greatest things to do when your shots are really dark and you're not really sure about which color way to go about it you just kind of take that saturation slider and you go Woo! you go straight to zero you can use the black and white and you can play with like uh, the tones of reds the tones of yellows tones of orange we can do that as well but uh, for just general purpose i think this works really well um, we can instantly kind of focus on just the highlights and just the shadows and using or having the light on this side and the way that they're shot, I think was going to be very flattering, even if it's just the one light source that we're focusing on. So let's just add a bit of contrast here. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to make it inch or two brighter. Add some detail in the shadows. This program is so powerful. A um, little bit of contrast. Again, you can, add, you can get away with a little bit more clarity and structure and punchiness in these shots because, you know, it's not, uh, it's not beauty photography of a, of a pretty model uh, showcasing lipstick. This is, you know, documentary style. So this works for them. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of grain as well. Oops, silver grain. And there we go. That's pretty good. Yeah, so that looks all right. Just a little moment that was happening. Um, this is some of the stuff that I like to do with Capture One. Obviously, it's not all encompassing. This is part of what I do, but I do quite like using this program a lot more than Lightroom. And it just kind of sets me up for the editing that I do in Photoshop a little bit later. So yeah, that's kind of all I've got for this week. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you guys got a little something out of it. Maybe subscribe if you haven't and leave a like on your way out. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in a couple days. Later.